And here we are once again gathered for another session of Legends of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion. Welcome. This is a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign uh, with, uh, well, all that that entails, I guess. Uh, this is a, a homebrew world of my own called Omatia, which uh, started... Marie, you're always much better at remembering exactly. What was it, four years? 2016, I think. 2016? Late 2016 or early 2017. Yeah, something like that. Annie, so, you're uh... muted. <laughs> <laughs> November 2016. See, I okay. knew she'd have like the perfect date on. Uh, so back in 2016, we gathered together to, uh, to play this game. And the world has been kind of growing and changing and transforming ever since. And... Uh, uh, Hopefully, I'll be able to let more people know about that. Uh, more entries will go up into the World Anvil. But it, it, one thing to know is the world of numerous islands uh, in a, a small amount of water. Uh, they do have sort of numerous seas, what they call them, not really all that heavily separated. And the island in particular we're playing on is an island called Ex Escus. In the initial campaign set in the year 4115, I believe it was, um, the the world was in a different kind of crisis, and one of the characters was exploring and reviving a god who had perished, well, 1,000 years ago in this particular campaign, a time called the Great Confusion, in which the world had just faced a crisis, but no one seems to really remember what it was. And these characters are uncovering that it may have been the passage of a god, slow, painful, and perhaps somewhat uh, uh, unbalancing in the world. Well, who are these players? Who are these characters? Well, starting on my left with Pat. My name is Pat. I am pay playing Silas, who's just an old man. <laughs> <laughs> where the hell did that come from? <laughs> well, that's where he left out. He's an old man. Yeah, old man oh, riding a wagon. Sure, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. That's valid. Uh, my name is Marie, and I'm playing Annie, who is the, the resident rogue. She's just uh, an innocent woman trying to make her way through the world. Hey, I'm totally not hiding absolutely nothing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do I start? Do I start? Oh, yeah. I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half-orc cleric, who had one pet rock, but now may have two pet rock friends. And, and is totally not Midrick. That guy no. never pays his no. taxes. He's some other dude. Yeah. It's, it's harder to get, get away with that now as you have rising prominence within the town. Yeah. I would have probably explained that. It's like, oh, no, that was a typo. My bad. Yeah, a typo. They don't have I, was trained, I was trained in the arts of war and healing, not writing. <laughs> you have terrible handwriting. That's why you haven't paid your taxes. <laughs> Doesn't seem like a great excuse. Well, to catch us up with... Like, oh, I'm 10 talking. gold? I'm sorry, I was off by, by a factor of 10. You made 100. Oh, my, my bad. I'll get that to you at some point. <laughs> I, know, I still haven't figured out the, got the hang of zeros yet. Yeah. Uh, oh, inch is my dump stat. The, uh, the, the omission <laughs> numbering system. It's very complicated. <laughs> All right. Well, a little bit of a recap as to what happened previously. After a relaxing month in which each member of the group spent some time investing in various activities... They reconvened to discuss what they had learned and what they hoped to do next. With the threat of the sea devils seemingly abated, the town had started many necessary repairs, and life began to return to normal. In particular, trade picked up swiftly, with numerous boats arriving in the docks and caravans uh, coming from the King's Road from Pitajun. The town is also abuzz with the news that the barony has announced a return to celebrating an old holiday, the coming midsummer. Entertainers are being hired locally, as well as a circus and special performers being brought in from abroad. There will be an entire week of celebrations in the Market Square, and a special ball to be held at the Barony Estates by invitation only. Around Elthwater, uh, Silas's tale of the Phoenix Champion, as well as considerable effort to rebuild at least a smaller version of the Temple of Ignis, has resulted in Medric's fame and renown rising around the town. Similarly, finding a young artist, finding the young artist Dogal Barrett from within the Marsh clan and throwing a celebration of their own has allowed Silas to solidify his position as harbinger. The group gathered at the Three Bells to catch up and discuss matters such as where to plant the seed of Azamunta 
and the various rumors and bits of information they had discovered. As they talked, a well-dressed noble entered the pub. He was a wealthy merchant, a man by the name of Ardwin Cartwright, followed by his tall bodyguard, the pale-skinned, quiet, muscled, tattooed Lild. Cartwright walked directly to the table and sat down. He had an opportunity for them. Having heard the news of their valor, he felt that they were the right people he needed to help him. He complained about having lost considerable money on caravans coming back and forth from Pitajun. They had been preyed upon by the Diamond, a notorious criminal, and he was tired of losing money and goods, not to mention people. He had devised a plan, a trap. He had spread rumors about a very important shipment going out to attract the criminal Diamond. He would have his own people on the two wagons being sent, but wanted the group to accompany them and capture or kill the Diamond. Sensing an opportunity for a good contact and possibly a way to get an invite to the exclusive party at the Baron's estate, the group agreed. The next morning, the group set out, hidden in the back of the wagons. After a few hours of travel along the King's Road, just as the wagons pulled up across the bridge that crossed the Ullam River, they heard a loud crack. A tree toppled across the road, blocking it right at the end of the bridge, trapping them on it. It appeared that the trap had worked, but instead of a hail of arrows or thugs from the nearby trees, they heard something entirely unexpected, the high mocking calls of multiple hyena. So, that's where we left off, but we're going to go back about a half an hour or so to uh, go along the road and, uh, and get to know the people that are with you just a little bit. So, pardon me, I have to scroll down. Um, four. That way we can get attached to them before they die. Well, I mean, <laughs> there may be a little bit of that, but also an opportunity <laughs> to role play rather than running right into combat. I feel like I moved a little too swiftly there. Uh, the four people that you have riding with you, the two drivers, Melora, who's running the front horses, uh, in the back, along with, uh, Medric is Petrok, a short half orc, um, who's been... Uh, sitting along with with you and caused a little bit of humor as we realized the Petrock kind of sounds like something else. In the other wagon, uh, driven by Stefan, a tall and thin, uh, uh, somewhat older gentleman carrying a whip uh, to keep his horses uh, in strictly in line, and alongside with Silas and Annie, Kara, a half-elf, uh, young, who... Of course, with half-elves and elves, it's sometimes hard to say what young really means. Uh, but do who did carry a, a somewhat nice bow as well. Along the way, um, uh, Medric had talked a little bit with Petrock, uh, but not much. Um, just kind of comparing notes a little bit. In the back, Kara seems fascinated with uh, Annie and Silas. Silas, as uh, was mentioned earlier, had uh, taken on the guise of an older human man, I'm assuming? Yeah, it's like a 60-year-old human. Okay. Um, does he look like a 60-year-old version of Silas, or are you patterning him off anybody in particular? Um... No, just random old guy. Okay. And did you show up like that, or did you yes. change? Okay. No, he walked in there like that. Okay. And I think Annie's in the front one, not the back one. Yeah. Oh, pardon me. Uh, is that mean that Medric is in the second one as well? Have I gotten that incorrect as well? Annie and Medric yeah. are both in the first yeah. one. Okay. Silas is alone in the back one. I hadn't noted that one, so thank you very much. Medric is currently uh, playing with the local cat. <laughs> He's also silenced. Um, I, uh, if, only ah, crap. Si if only you could silence cat. The dog was barking, so I had to mute it. <laughs> uh, the, the, the circus has already arrived at, uh, in Medric's place. Um, so... Let us begin then with the first wagon, with the uh, the half orc, um, who's sitting alongside Annie and Medric. Um, 
not a very um, uh, talkative fellow, but he does seem to be watching each of you. And he in particular noticed that uh, it, it seems as though he's sizing up Medric, kind of trying to get the measure of the person, uh, but looks at you with some confusion, trying to figure you out entirely. It doesn't seem to say all that much. In the front, Melora tends to sing a little bit. Um, not a, a loud song, more of a road song, something that has sort of a regular repeating uh, refrain, something that, that uh, kind of follows along the, the medium pace of the horses. Um, it, it sounds somewhat familiar. You may have heard a song like that um, about the fisherman's wife, uh, sung in many a pub here and there. Each uh, each stanza becomes a little bit uh, closer to being racy. It's one of those songs that, if you just look at the words, is you know perfectly normal, clean song. But as soon as you start to understand the implications, uh, it makes a lot of people blush. <laughs> so a song for both children and adults at the same time. <laughs> it, it, it's it's definitely a pub song, you know, where okay. where uh, you know you you bring the family. And the kids don't. Kids will sing along to the song, and then by the they time won't they get it. teenage <laughs> years, they'll, they'll know what it means. It's the one to embarrass the grandkids more than anything else, or grandparents more than anything else. Um, finally, as you've been riding along for a while, uh, Petrock turns to Annie. Um, what, how is Annie dressed on this particular mission? Is there anything different or abnormal about what, the way she's dressed? Um, I'd like to think that her armor is fitted to go underneath her clothes. Okay. Uh, so she'd be wearing something very plain, uh, and doesn't have any visible armor. Uh, probably has her hood on her, her cloak. And yeah, just basic out for a job. Okay. Are you carrying, um... Azamunta's bow, or, or Azamunta's yeah. branch, I should say. <laughs> I can I can drink things without dying. <laughs> drink or breathe. <laughs> Don't try to do both. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I would I would have the bow, uh, and all. So yeah, just the the normal. Okay. Um, Azamunta's branch is a spectacular looking bow, however, with its, its sort of green foliage growing over it. Um, and uh, just the beginning bud, in this case, of a purple flower. It hasn't fully formed today. Um, and what about the the uh, thorns? Um, I have them as darts, I believe I said. Yeah. So I would have them... As I would store my normal darts. Okay. Is that like a bandolier, or do you have them kind of in a pouch? Probably a little pouch. Okay. A little pouch off to your side. Um, and aside from that, you have a uh, vice. I don't know if you have a sword as well. Um, let me check. Uh... Usually using vice, no. where you're using you're using uh, the bow. So, I, I I have dagger. Oh, I have a rapier. Okay. So I don't use it often. Yeah, but you you've got it with you. You're kitted out to uh, to fight just in case. Yep. And for Medric, how is Medric dressed? Are you in your full Ignean best? Oh, uh, armor, shield with a symbol of Ignis on it, and cloak that's probably like a little battered after all that's happened to it. But also has. No, my cloak didn't have the symbol of Ignis on it, but I'm I, wearing it. You had a tabard, I think, didn't you? Or, or. Yeah, uh, I had splint mail and like probably like a tabard over it or something. Okay. Uh, and you have your uh, weapon of choice. Oh yeah, the warhammer. Um, probably strapped across your back or 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 uh, propped up against the side of the wagon. Well, if I'm, I'm assuming I'm like sitting down in the wagon, so it's like next to me or sitting on my lap. Okay. Uh, there are several crates in the wagon. Um, 
it was explained to you that this is decoy. Uh, uh, there is actual goods inside the crates. The entire mission is meant to, if, if nothing happens, is meant to go all the way to uh, Lake Az uh, um, uh, Azum. Is that right? Lake Azum? Yeah. Um, not all the way to Pit of June, although the, the rumored trip is supposed to take you all the way to Pit of June. Okay. Um, so that's the cover story that uh, Cartwright has put together. Um, so Petrock kind of looks at the bow, um, Annie, with a, an appraising eye. Petrock himself is uh, has a short bow. It looks like a, 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 a kind of a standard short bow. Nothing terribly fancy about it. It does look like he's got some, some decent arrowheads. So that seems to be where he's invested his money, if anything else. Although the arrows themselves are fairly short as well. Um, and just sort of sort of shakes his head towards you or nods towards you. Um, that's an unusual bow. I haven't seen anything quite like that before. Neither had I. It's, it's very special to me. Did you find it here or somewhere else? It was a gift. Oh. You must have done something really nice for a gift like that. That's... Go for it. It's... It's been very useful. Yeah. Have you had it long? Not particularly. Maybe if we get a chance to stop during lunch or something... I wouldn't mind trying it if, if that's okay. I don't use a longbow, but I, I don't. It, it's it's a short bow. I'm not proficient in longbows. Okay. I, mean, I wanted I, a longbow. I, <laughs> I use I use a short a short bow, but mine. I don't think it would hold a candle to that thing. It, it's it's a nice thing to shoot. I can certainly imagine. Who knows? We might get to see what it does. I'm hoping so. These roads aren't exactly safe all the time. I've done a number of trips for Cartwright back and forth. Most of the time, I haven't seen anything come by, but I've heard tales of others. Mm -hmm. We've encountered a few bandits weeks ago, if not months ago now. Yeah. It's, well, I've... Go ahead. It, it it seems to be rough. Yeah. Um. If you don't mind yeah. my asking, are, are are you the Phoenix champion? Is that what Silas calls the uh, fiery guy in his stories? Yes, and the old man <laughs> giggles. But the old man's not in a wagon. <laughs> I, his voice is right, hairy enough hear. from this distance. Yes. Uh, it's not that far away. And it isn't okay. like the, the, the wagons are running at breakneck speed. They're running at a manageable pace that they can do for an entire day. Okay. Um, uh, perhaps. Have I seen Silas's tail, by the way, in the tavern? Um, that's a good question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Are some of the things that embellish it a little bit? <laughs> nope. N not by <laughs> Silas, but as the tale has spread, spread around the town, there definitely have been some enhancements to it. There are even different verses that Silas didn't write. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are some similarities, yeah. So how'd you, how'd you do that? Uh, which part specifically? Well, I mean, I guess kind of all of it. Is it something you picked up while well, during the war? I can't remember the war, unfortunately. Uh, I started with the teachings of Ignis before the war, shortly before the war. It's painful, but it's efficient. I, I don't know much about Ignis. I did a couple of deliveries to the to the temple 
well, the, the older temple here and there. It was kind of creepy with that fire burning all the time. Why? Why did you follow that? I don't know. In a way, it feels like it wasn't really my decision, but I went with it. It just felt natural. Was it something your parents did? Or, or friends of yours? No. Huh. You know, when, when an opportunity presents itself and you feel like you have to do it, not because you're forced, but because it just seems like the obvious way forward. That's was, kind of was, what it felt like. It was obvious for you then. Yes. I don't know if I was fated to become a Kmar, but here I am. What's a Kmar? A uh, healer, or a one type of healer for the Temple of Ignis. Technically, they're, they're sort of the warrior class, but... Yeah. Like all clerics, they have the capacity to heal. Right. I read the thing, I swear, I just, like, forget all the exact, like, details. It's part of the reason I'm having the NPCs go to quiz you a little bit on this. To, to, to both, gotcha. To bring it ah, you didn't tell me there'd be a test. Well, no, not quiz. <laughs> That's the wrong term. There's no failure. This is not a quiz. Yeah, no. Um, but more of an opportunity to talk about it. Yeah. Um, and, and so when did you meet up with, and he kind of gestures towards Annie, your... Um, Spouse? Uh, Business partner? <laughs> uh, we're not dating. La uh, there's loud laughter from the back. Uh... <laughs> What's so funny, Kara, Kara says to uh, to Silas. <laughs> What's so funny? Well, they're definitely not married. Oh, they don't fight nearly enough. <laughs> <laughs> We got off the boats at around the same time. Yeah, it was, it was weird and kind of terrifying. I supposedly went to war, and we supposedly won. Against who? Nobody remembers. Were you in the war as well? No, no. I, I've only ever worked in town. Well, actually, I was in Pitajun. And then I had a caravan trip over this way, and I sort of make my trip, my life back and forth between both. All my family's back in Pitajun, but I don't know, there's something about the open sea which calls to me a little bit more. Hoping to get on boat, maybe? Okay. Well, uh, there are... There are ships that make travels for businesses. Yeah, it's just hard to find a spot on them. Seems like a lot of the crews are either, well, very close together, if you know what I mean, or, well, the the hired hands aren't exactly treated well, from what I hear. Mm -hmm. uh, Annie and I know of a ship that may be looking for some crew, and I'm thinking of the Aaron, the Aaron Widow right now. But they're doing a delivery, or they're out to sea, I think, right now. Well, a recommendation would be good in both ways. If you can recommend me to them, and, and, and if they are a ship that you feel, uh, well, if they have the, the stamp of approval from the Phoenix champion, I think that that signs them pretty well. Yeah. They've been good so far, from what, I've, from what I know about them. I mean, Annie knows one of the important people on board, so... I, I can see if I can talk on? to them. Hmm? Is that the ship you traveled on in Annie, was it? Uh, no, I, I got here a little bit before the Errant Widow did. Oh. Were you in the war, too? No, I'm just traveling. Oh. What is it you do for a living? <laughs> oh, a bit of this, a bit of that. Learn to fight. Read a lot. Uh, that sounds kind of nice, really. I don't read much. 
I don't get out much to say from on the travel back and forth from the road to Pitajun, but I guess Cartwright believes in you if he sent you on this. I'm not so sure he believes in us, though. It makes me feel a little bit nervous, actually. I think he just wanted to make sure you guys would be okay. A bit of reassurance. Mm. Never hurt. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're here. I mean, I guess now I get to say I fought alongside the Phoenix champion, or, or at least rode alongside the Phoenix champion. Yeah, and who knows, fighting may happen. And uh, the Pet Rock I mentioned earlier, if we get ambushed, you'll, you'll see what I mean by Pet Rock. That's kind of similar to your name. Uh, yeah, this is pretty awkward. I don't get it. <laughs> well, your name's Pet Rock, right? No, my name's Pet And Rock. I have like a pet rock. <laughs> anyway. No, I don't get Phoenix it. Phoenix champion or not, I am kind of awkward sometimes. Um, Willow's song changes and you kind of catch and this is something that Silas you may cringe at you catch the song of the Phoenix Champion but it's not right it's not rhyming oh. properly it's it's kind of off in a couple of places there's definitely a couple of stanzas you did not write in there um, there's something about burning love and desire that you're pretty sure you didn't put in there oh no Silas would laugh rolls his eyes. Speaking of awkward. <laughs> so, I don't mean to be insensitive, says Kara from the back uh, wagon. But aren't you a little old for this? <laughs> I'll be fine, dear. Don't worry. And he holds his uh, staff up into the air shakily. Get off my lawn. Okay, just maybe stay in here if things get really dangerous. I wouldn't worry about him too much. I just wouldn't want him to, you know, break a hip or something. Nah, I've never broken a ship. Do you expect to find a ship out here? No, a, a hip. I mean, your leg or something. I'm sure they use pegs on ships, but I think you're a little confused. I'm sorry, Grandfather. I didn't mean to confuse you. Don't worry. Whatever happens, I can heal him. Oh, okay. Um... And she kind of looks off to the side good. of the road, a little bit concerned and trying to figure out how she's going to protect this old man who's sitting beside her. He's, he's quite capable of taking care of himself. You hear uh, Stefan, who's been pretty quiet at this point. Uh, all you've really heard from him is just sort of a crack. I don't know why she while. thinks I'm an elf, but uh, thank you, Annie. And you hear a chuckle come from Stefan in the middle, uh, who's driving the second wagon. Uh, does, hey, he just Silas is in deep cover. Exactly, uh, and yet he's laughing at this as if he's if he's aware of the joke. Well, we'll let the the awkwardness pass then, unless there's something else that you would like to initiate as a conversation or talk about. They do stop at one point just kind of to, to stretch the legs. Nothing seems to have, have come at you at this point. Until, of course, as we lead up to where we, we had left off, which is um, as the road, which has been fairly strong and wide, um, well-made um, stone pathway that has been maintained, uh, leads up a small uh, hill, kind of rises a little bit to a stone um crossing over the river Olam. Uh, there's about a, a, a 10 foot rise above the, the river's surface. 
which is swift but not terribly strong. It's starting to pick up a little bit this time of the year as uh, the, uh, the, the melt is fully, uh, fully formed off of the, the snow build up in the hills. And sure enough, as you ride across the river and ride across on the bridge, there is that loud crack. A tree falls across the, the bridge. It falls right at the very end of the bridge, making it difficult even to go around. The horses are all brought up quickly. The ones up front probably a little bit less, uh, a little bit more concerned, a little bit more whinnying. The wagon or the uh, bridge itself is not wide enough to turn the wagons around, uh, and backing up horses is very difficult to do, effectively stalling you where you are. And then, as mentioned, the sound of howling, a howling laughter that rings out from around you. And Here we go. Is move you onto the map. Now I need to move my <laughs> my little identifier because right now it looks like a big tree. That's like the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Yes, they are red blotches. It's hard to draw in Roll20, <laughs> but those are representative of the wagons themselves. As mentioned before, they have kind of a chuck wagon style. Um, they're they're uh, wooden, uh, very simple wooden open sp spots with a uh, curved uh, canvas roof uh, held over top of them. And I need to... Uh, pardon me, as I need to... Whoops reveal some of the things uh, I'll be right back sure do you see a tree fell behind us too or no the tree has not fallen behind you okay As you see, several hyenas run towards you from the from back from behind. And oops, there they are. A few more charged from the back as well. So I will get all of my stuff in order pardon me I had forgotten to bring up those sheets and we will roll for initiative let me just reset the initiative counter um, all right I'm going to have to take my headset off because I forgot to charge it. Okay. Where did my initiative go? So I had to reset the initiative counter and then we could start oh, the initiative. Yeah. So maybe you did it just before or just after. Probably. Yeah. Just yeah. Before. It's 14.1. Uh, okay. I actually selected my character properly and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Should I just. Um, hmm? If I know what it is, I can type it in. That's not big. 14.1. I really wish um, if there's anybody who ever has the ear of uh, of the um, makers of Roll20 or any of these, I would love to be able to just say, open all the relevant sheets. Like, create my own, uh, my own um, 
folder. Yeah, like a macro yeah. almost. Like all of these people get to get to go in. Because uh, right now that's just a pain. Do it all manually. Um, all right. And one for. Okay, Annie, Silas, and Medrick are there. Uh, Melora, Petrock. Oh, yeah, I'm missing Stefan. Okay. And the hyenas are going on a group initiative. So, we begin the combat with uh, with Annie. Um, there is no particular surprise here as you uh, had heard them uh, uh, kind of announce themselves almost and the chilling sound of the hyenas laughs. Um, oops, that guy's not there. Do, 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 do. Um, Sorry about that. I just realized. There. Two hyenas in front, two hyenas in back. So you wouldn't have been surprised anyway, but you are not surprised um, as you kind of were ready and waiting for this. And the crack of the tree was the initial um, the initial strike. Um. So the front and the back of the thing is an open area, right? Of the wagon? Yeah. Uh, yes. So I, um, can I see this this guy? Can you see which guy? That guy. Yep. They're charging uh, in the woods right now. Cool. I would like to... Uh, use my shirt. Uh, actually, uh, two seconds. How much movement does it take to get out of the wagon? Yeah, five feet. Uh, it's not difficult. Uh, so, uh, if you can turn uh, down your speakers a little bit, I'm getting a, quite a bit of feedback. That better? Uh, well, I won't know until I speak, and there's oh. a little bit still, but not too bad. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so I will move to here. Okay, hopping out of the wagon. And, uh, I will shoot at the whichever one is the bigger one out front. Okay, they look to be about the same size. Cool, I'll shoot the closest one then. Uh, with my nice bow. 16. 16. Easy hit. <laughs> 10 damage. All right. The uh, nope. arrow hits it uh, right through the skull, and you see it go limp with a yelp as it falls over dead. It is too far for that. So, yeah, I think that's all I can do. Bonus action. Yeah. Okay, you hop out of the back. Of the wagon. <laughs> I, 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 I cannot. I, I can dash. Feedback. Yeah, there's a lot of feedback coming back from that. Um, Maybe angle something. I don't know. Angle the speaker away from the uh, camera or something. It, it's all my laptop. Okay. Give me a second. I just can't hear very well with the plug-in 
function of this headset? If someone can talk. Yep. Can you hear my dog barking in the background? <laughs> uh, I can barely hear. Uh, I'll I'll make do with this though. Can might anybody else hear the dog barking? What? Nope. Okay. Uh, might be able to just turn down the um, uh, like the settings that pick up the the sound. Uh, I, I don't know to... how to do that. Okay. Not on the fly like this. So it, yeah, I, yeah. I will make do with this. Um, uh, I will uh, dash. Ah, that is not the pickup tool. Yeah, there we okay. go. As you move closer to the front, you've hopped down off the back of the wagon, fired a quick shot, satisfyingly saw one of the hyenas fall over from that, one of the lead ones. Um, make a perception check. Uh, skill. Skill. Probably not. Uh, yeah, as you're kind of rushing forward, you can kind of hear the sounds of the hyenas. And something's a little bit wrong, but you can't quite picture, can't quite put your, your finger on it as uh, the sounds of, of howling and laughter grow in uh, volume. That is your move, action, and bonus. Is there anything else? Mm -hmm. That's all I can do. Okay. Um, Kara from the back of the wagon sees these charging forward and also fires off her short bow. Um, and strikes not quite as strongly as um, as Annie had at the front, but still enough to stagger the beast coming forward. So the one right in front of the wagon, she fires off a short, a short shot and almost instinctively and protectively, kind of uh, after she's taken her shot, holds out her hand almost protectively across Silas as if to defend him. Uh, she's staying where she's at. Melora in the front um, is actually struggling with the horses right now who are kicking and uh, trying to bolt and charge, but she's trying to hold them in place. Um, that will be animal handling. No problem. Able to keep them nice. and start to calm them down. Medric. Right. I will get out of the wagon, grab hammer and shield. You said it's five feet to get out of the wagon? Yep. Two... I'll go back here and hold an action. So if a hyena goes near me, it's getting smacked. Okay. Uh, make a perception check. Dice roller, where'd you go? All right. Everybody's as getting sixes. Yeah. As you step out onto the uh, onto the row onto the the bridge and uh, kind of jog backwards, readying yourself. Still, as before, you're kind of hearing the, the calling of these, these hyenas back and forth to each other. But something doesn't feel quite right. You're not sure exactly what it is. Um, and now it's time for the hyenas. Um, uh, I need a better mousing system. All right. Um, the first thing that uh, becomes apparent is that was not all the hyenas. As you see uh, another one emerge from the trees in front of you. Nope. In front of who? I'm just trying to do the, to get the thing to move onto the, there we go. Uh, in front of you, actually, the other end of the bridge. As another one okay. charges out through, and you can also see another one charging up to the side as well. Um, around, um, sorry, I'm trying to remember the keys <laughs> so I can do this faster. But unfortunately, that means I'm forgetting how to do this faster. Um, two more hyenas also uh, charge out of the woods 
um, towards you, uh, Annie, as they start to uh, converge and run through. So I'm going to move them in, essentially in packs. Um, as three of them kind of run to surround Annie. And from the other side, uh, let's see. Two of them move up to where Medric is, and two will actually run to where uh, Carrie and Silas are. Oop. The wrong button. Just to resolve our uh, in a pro or immediate roles. Um, so the first one is getting hit. Yep. So go ahead and make your reaction hit now. <laughs> That's most definitely a hit. Plus strength bonus and proficiency. It's we only strength bonus things, for damage, right? We just right? can't see things. <laughs> That's fair. So you take a mighty swing of the hammer, Smack. catching it in the side. Um, it goes. It yelps loudly as you uh, crack into its lungs. It does not appear to be dead, but you can see now foam forming around its mouth. Uh, and this close to it, with it uh, snapping at your legs, you also notice something strange about it. There's a sort of purplish glow coming from within their eyes uh, as uh, they attack you. Um, first, one of them strikes. Uh, the one that you just hit uh, yelps and then lunges forward trying to bite you. Uh, 22 hits, I think. Yep. It's a crit. Uh, however, that was a really terrible roll on damage. Hey. <laughs> that was an amazingly bad roll on damage. Uh, two points of piercing damage. Uh, and the second one, also, uh, biting at your legs. Uh, does an 11 hit? No. I didn't think so. Um, so they're snapping away, kind of keeping you you occupied for the moment. Over by Annie. Um, we'll start with the one that's directly north of you. And you can see them kind of trying to surround you uh, and, and nipping at you. Um, partially because you seem to have made yourself a target, at least in their eyes. And one of them went down. But also, this close up, also you notice that, that sort of purplish glow around their eyes. Uh, and that uh, foam around their lips. Uh, 22 hits. That's the exact opposite for damage. <laughs> uh, as you take 12 points of piercing damage from one of them it's kind of grabbed, on, grabbed onto your leg it gives your leg a strong uh, pull and tug nearly pulling you off your feet before you manage to kind of kick it away the second one next to it 15 does that hit? I believe that meets yes that meets Okay. Um, kind of coming from the other side you're a little bit off balance from kicking the one free of your foot uh, and another one grapples onto another leg forcing you to kind of do this strange hopping dance back and forth. And the third one, a 12? No. Okay. Uh, as the third one uh, fails to to connect, maybe because both of your legs have been up in the air at this point, and it's still grappling at that. Uh, at Kara, um, the one kind of nipping at her legs, which are, she's, she's kind of kneeling down on the back of the wagon and leaps up to try to grasp onto her. Uh, unfortunately not able to kind of make them close up the distance. And the final one, sensing an old, easy-to-kill meal, goes after Silas. <laughs> Doesn't seem so. But the, the height of the wagon, it seems to be uh, bothering it a little bit as it tries to sort of jump up. And it's just it sort of the landing shield in the on, face. Uh, on the top. Uh, yeah, and you have your, your shield as well. Uh, which, I mean, Kara seems a little surprised when you bring out the shield and so swiftly move it into place. Um, but also, doesn't... it looks like I've got a turtle on there. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Petrock. Petrock is going to try to get out and join uh, Annie at the front. Let's see. Um, Petrock is going to run to stand beside you, mm -hmm. kind of ready to fight. Um, he has... Uh, actually, wait, no, he has a short bow. What am I thinking? I thought you said they all had like a short sword or something, too. They do, but he has a... 
he has a uh, a short bow, which means he just right, has right. to kind of hop out to about uh, about there and take a pot shot at this guy. Um, uh, but misses, unfortunately, as the arrow goes flying on by. But hits on, hits the tree on the other side. Um, Silas, you're up. Okay. Well, Silas charges up his staff with a bonus action cantrip and then whacks the one in front of him with a, uh, with, um, what's it called? The Sonic Boom Strike. Thunder Wave? No. No, the one oh, from Booming, uh, Booming Blade. That's it. Okay. Well, that definitely hits with a 19. Oof. Okay. Uh, okay. Not a crit. So that's six bludgeoning plus one thunder. All right. The. Uh, <clears throat> it resonates around the entire area, and you can hear the sound kind of uh, bouncing back and forth across the trees, uh, uh, attracting the attention of, well, every bird in every direction as they all kind of flutter up into the trees. Um, the hyena lets out a, a, a very loud yelp, kind of stepping back down and leaning down on its front paws, looking up at you, growling with anger. Um, once more, the note of the purplish glow from the eyes. Uh, and for a brief second after the boom is heard, there is uh, a silence from partially all the, the birds having left. But then resonating calls of uh, yips and the strange, almost human-like laughter of the hyenas, both from the things in front of you and now coming from uh, numerous places off in the woods. Uh, also, that particular hyena is now surrounded by a bit of sonic energy. So if it moves, uh, basically, if it moves a square, it takes extra damage. Good to note. I will put a little thing on it here. Damn, Silas. If that wasn't so destructive, you should use it as a bass drop in your music. <laughs> What's a bass drop? I'm going to have to stop that in a second. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is your action. Are you going to move or use a bonus action? I bonus actioned to uh, to buff the staff, and I'm not going to move. Okay, fair point. Um, Stefan also kind of trying to get control of the horses up front. Less successful. So the horses are bucking and uh, shaking in front of the second caravan. Uh, the wagon itself is is shifting back and forth. Uh, it, it does mean that any attack made uh, or uh, or concentration roll, actually, for that matter. Basically, any roll is going to be a disadvantage while the wagon is shifting and shaking so badly until he can get it under control. Uh, top of the round. Pardon me, I have a lot of things to bring onto the map. As from the woods, the yipping sounds of hyenas can be heard, but these seem different somehow. Uh, they seem to be like large uh, hyenas, massive, in fact, um, standing nearly six feet tall on their rear, on their hind legs, still digigrade like a, like a, a hyena's but now um, walking almost like, like human beings, like humanoids. Um, for you, Silas, this is not an unfamiliar uh, description, although I don't think you've ever seen gnolls directly. You've heard the name of them before. Um, but make a nature roll, as will they. That 20 would have been nice. No go. 
and Kara beside you will also try, but she's not really, doesn't really understand what these are. You can't put your finger on it, but something about these seems strange and wrong. Um, they are wrapped up in furs, the primitive sort of uh, version of clothing that they have, uh, used almost as trophies, and you've heard of that before, dangling bones uh, sort of tied together, but nothing in the way of, of technology, nothing in the way of, of, uh, of mortals that you would understand it. But they seem uh, to Silas move. will uh, yell out, uh, Noel's incoming. Indeed. Um, oh, sorry, I need to. Not the nose. Wow, they're going crazy on the initiative. Um, just before Annie and with Kara and Melora. Wow, Kara. Really? The Noel, Kara, and Melora have exactly the same initiative. That's so bizarre. <laughs> uh, but they start to appear um, around the edges. They're no longer making themselves hidden and sort of stepping into, into the area. Oh, and I have one hyena here that's not gone anywhere. Well, he'll, he's, he's healing with the other ones. All right. Uh, bah. Uh, they have now all appeared. Annie, you're up. Hello. You can now um, see numerous creatures well, kind of moving along the back of the woods. I also now have one in my face. So uh, Vice is going to come out. Okay. Shing. Blows um, ever so slightly. Hard to see in this particular. Uh, Dab. Mm. Oops. There's one of them that's injured, right? Um, sorry, I just did something I didn't mean to do. I don't think so. I think you killed the one that you shot and the other guy missed. Um, okay. That is correct. I, I thought that uh, they hit something. Or no, they, they were doing... Never mind. I was well, thinking Laura was, of... was dealing with the horses. Uh, Petrock fired but missed. I was mixing up Melora and Kira in my brain. Okay, so I will hit one of them, like, really hard. <laughs> okay. How do I, like, delete things on the map? Because I accidentally drew on it. Oh, 11. <laughs> uh, an 11? Oh. 11 hits. Oh. Uh, so five piercing damage. Okay, I'm just gonna pick the northern one. You didn't specify particularly, but yeah, uh, the the one that that I think it was the northern one that that crit on me. Okay. Yep. So uh, you strike out with uh, with vice, which carves a a nasty uh, gash in the side of its head, and it howls with anger, and then sort of sticks its tongue up over its teeth, licking its own blood. And you can see that intensity grow in its eyes. Uh, and I will use the help action to give help to Petra to hit it. Okay. Okay. He's a little bit lower voiced. <laughs> uh, that is your your bonus and your action. You can move, but you are kind of surrounded at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I, I can... I can't survive that. Okay. Um, they move in. Let's see. What are there? Too many windows. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, let's see. This one's going to move in and go after one of the horses with the uh, thing by its side. It's more or less its pet. Uh, let's see, this one is rushing towards 
um, Petrock. And you can see as they're running forward, although they kind of s step lightly um, while on, on, on hind feet, as they go to run, they run on all fours. And as they, they carve across the stone and across the grass and across the dirt, you can see that they have very large claws, which are digging into the edges of the, uh, of the uh, ground. The other one is larger. Um, you can see it holding back a little bit. And Annie, from where you are, you can see this larger one kind of stand beside the edge of the log uh, and seems to be um, muttering. It comes across as sort of a yip, 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 rap, yip, kind of weird yipping sort of language uh, as it uh, proceeds to um, speak something. Oh, I see what you've done. Sorry, I just noticed the things that... that uh, we're added onto the map here. I can get rid yeah, of Yeah, can you remove them? I don't know how. <laughs> uh, but it seems it's like to be measure the and, radius and, of something. And but... Blackish energy seems to extend along its the edge of its black claws. Um, That's not good. See, no. This guy's going to run in beside the hyena that's there. And this one's going to run into that side. And this one might not be able to make it there. Yeah, this one's just going to run in to be beside the other two that are sort of surrounding each of you. Uh, let's see. Now, for the ones that can actually do something, the one that you saw with its energy uh, uh, growing um, throws forth its hands. Uh, let's see. At the two horses. Bolts of purplish black energy streak out towards the, each of the horses. Um, and ground themselves out on the stone right beside them. And you can see the stone itself has now large divots um, kind of right there and right nearby. Narrowly missing the horses, probably because of the mass chaos that's going on around them. And also possibly because one of the other uh, creatures has has moved up beside one of the horses. That is not something you would have expected to have happen. That one next to a horse, though, does attempt to claw it, uh, does hit, and the horses. Uh, whoops. Well, that horse is dead. It sort of claws its claws sink deeply into the side of the horse, and it bucks and wheezes. And then kind of goes slack, um, falling over in the in the reins. You can hear a call from Melora, who seems to be both angry and concerned at the same time. Down at the other end, the ones that have moved in on uh, Silas and Kara. The one with the oops, don't have that there. Oops. Uh, will lunge towards um, Silas and try to bite with its um, hyena ally nearby. Uh, 24. Yeah, that'll hit. And you take eight points of piercing as its massive jaw crushes down on your arm, uh, kind of catching a little bit of the, the shield on your arm at the same time. Um. The one towards uh, Kara. Ooh. Similarly, it takes a nasty bite out of her. She looks very wounded all of a sudden, quite surprised by the sudden onrush. And a little bit desperate. Where she was trying to protect you for a moment ago, now she seems entirely overwhelmed. Uh, let's see. That is all of them. Oops, that guy's not supposed to be here. Do, 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 do. Pardon me, is one of the guys wasn't supposed to be on the map. Um, Kara, now desperate to get away, um, will disengage 
and back up towards the back of the wagon. Gaining a little bit of shelter from these things. Uh, Melora, angry with what just happened and the horses that she managed to get under control, will take a strike, uh, a well, pull out her bow actually, and quickly fire off at the creature, which I'll just call a knoll because that's a convenient name for them. If I can find the right sheet to fire off her bow at it. Strikes. A solid hit, but it doesn't seem to be entirely phased by it. She's starting to look a little bit desperate. Uh, and yeah, kind of can't really move from there. And Medrick, you're up. All right. Am I still on mute? No. I'm... Okay. Well, if you saw me, like, fucking around with the arrows, you probably know what's coming next. <laughs> <laughs> so right here, uh, wait, where's the thing? How do I God, fucking roll 20? Between those two trees, like, how, how do I do? Uh... Just click and hold. Yeah, right there. Okay. So Medrick will close his eyes. Deep inhale, exhale, focus, like, well, focus, yes, and feel the power of Ignis coursing through his veins and point to that spot between the trees. Yes. Fireball. Fireball, radius of 30 feet? Uh, 20, 20 foot radius. 20 foot radius, okay. Yeah. Uh, these guys are all going to be out of that radius. Hmm? What? No, I know, like, here. One, yeah. one, one square above. All right. Awesome. Everything except for this one guy. You will catch yep. the edge of the wagon on fire, most likely, but let's see. That's the uh, will it hit <laughs> What? It, no, Medrick, sorry. Will it hit uh, Silas? Nope. It won't hit Silas. He's just outside. It okay. Won't hit Medrick, because he's just outside. Cool. I thought he might have been a little too close. Um, that's an awesome uh, use. Let me see. That is a dexterity saving throw. Yep. Uh, DC is 13. Okay. So for the, uh, let's see, let's start with the hyenas, the one to your right. Uh, that one saves. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so let me do, well, actually, doesn't matter if it's saved because they're not that powerful. Uh, so that one is done. Burns up, uh, kind of howling and, and, uh, and screaming. Uh, this one actually also doesn't matter if it saves. Uh, you're muted, Pat, but I can hear you from the other room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hyenas are facing the fate of many a familiar. It's true. And I'm not being so kind to them. So yes, each of the hyenas uh, do kind of get caught in this massive uh, ball of flame that goes uh, uh, burning forward uh, and are, are howling out with an a hollow cry as they as they burn uh, that does feel a little bit frightening. Uh, but now for the ones that are not uh, just strictly hyenas. Uh, let's see. That is a dexterity saving throw. That one succeeds, so it takes half damage. Uh, this guy... Uh, succeeds for half damage. Oops. And that's it. <laughs> it cleared out a lot of them at this moment. Uh, oh, yeah. I will say that the corner of the wagon uh, is on fire. Because fireball. Yeah. All right. It, that was, it, it does not. That was highly effective. Congratulations. It was awesome. It's super effective. <laughs> I mean, with that shouldn't those trees also be on fire? Oh yeah, everything everything over everything over here is, yeah, is yeah, on yeah. fire. Absolutely. I'm staying over here. Yeah, I there's a burning the forest next to the forest. Uh, with fairly dense packed trees. So yes. Uh, absolutely. You know what? I will I will draw fire <laughs> oopsies well we could really use that rain right now <laughs> lots and lots of fire 
All right, that was your action. Now you still have yeah. your move and bonus. Okay. And if I... Right, because I, 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 like a dumbass, I left Graveler in the wagon. Move, okay. I will move back to the wagon. I'm assuming Silas and... Uh, uh, does Silas have things under control here? Do I have to be next to Graveler to activate him? You have to be holding him and place him on the ground and say the keyword. So it's a whole thing. Crap. Okay. Does it have to be me? Nope. All three no. of you have the keyword and, and know how to do it. All right. Petrock! What? Grab grab the pet rock and say, motherfucker. Just trust me. Uh, it, it does have to be one of you three. Oh, crap. Okay. Never mind. So I will go back. And one dude probably gets an opportunity attack. Does indeed snap at you. 23 hits. Ah, damn it. Four points yep. of damage. So you hop back into the wagon? Yep. All right. And can I activate him as a bonus action? I believe it's a full action. Yeah. Is it? Uh... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a full action. It's as if you're casting the spell, I think. Okay. Yeah, most summons are, are full actions, I think. All right. Well, that cleared out the hyenas. A lot less for me to track, which is awesome, except for the one surrounding uh, Annie and the one that's a pet, um, which can actually move in now to try to harry... Uh, actually, try to harry uh, Melora from where it is. So, leaping up towards... Uh, too many windows. Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. I have a hyena. Hyena attacking Melora. Uh, hits. Uh, leaps up on towards the the uh, the uh, little wooden plank. Essentially, it serves as the as the seat, and grapples onto one foot. Uh, Melora uh, lets out a a a painful and kind of angry uh, uh, shout from that. The three surrounding. Uh, Annie, first one, does a 14 hit. And you can kind of see that they're working in tandem with each other. 15. 15, okay. Second one, uh, non-natural 20 hits. Four damage. And they're kind of diving in and nipping at your at your the, the your legs and your, your uh, thighs and every once in a while your arm getting in the wrong spot. And the third one, third one misses. As they are surrounding you. Uh, Petrock uh, was intended to use his bow. Still going to try to use this bow. Was kind of taken up uh, by surprise by the uh, creature in front. Will be at disadvantage because it's so close. Uh, still strikes. Very good strike. Um, but the arrow seems to be almost ignored by the massive creature uh, pressing down on him. Silas. Okay. Um. Yeah. First of all, Silas is going to bonus action to cast Hex on this one. Okay. He is Hexing Strength. Which will only affect if he makes an athletics roll, but it's got to be something. So, uh, and then uh, he is going to jump down. Uh, actually, no, not going to hex that guy. Sorry, I forgot. I'm going to bonus action to cast healing word from the ring on uh, the lady here. Okay. And that is six points she's healed for, which I think was what she took. Uh, then he jumps down, and he's going to take a... Uh, 
Uh, why can I not remember the name of that spell? Where's my list of stuff? The name of the actual spell or the name you gave the spell? Uh, he just uses the the normal ones now. Booming Blade. There we go. Where did your icon go? He fell behind one of the uh, dead things. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm on top is. of the dead thing on my map. But, yeah, um, mine too. So, yes. I uh, the guy I was going to hex, I will instead hit with the Booming Blade. Oh. Go. There we go. That's a 14 to hit. Okay. Uh, that misses. Dang it. Because he did lots of damage on that one. Uh, oh, well. And you can see that the the uh, this one seems to have not only what you would thought was just sort of a, a, a hide wrapped around it, but it actually seems to be reinforced slightly. More than one hide wrapped for a little bit of extra protection. Cool. Uh, that's it for me. Okay, Stefan. Once again, oh, you're at disadvantage for that roll anyway. Remember, because there's the wagon is still shifting. Stefan hasn't gotten control of it yet. Uh, he hopped down before he hit. Ah, okay, fair enough. Stefan will try to get get a hold of the wagon. <sighs> Unfortunately, the horses are getting even more spooked by all of this. Uh, again, at sorry about the fire. <laughs> yeah, it may have something to do with the fact the wagon is on fire. <laughs> Or maybe the fire moving towards the large amounts of explosives that he... No, I'm not. I'm just kidding. No <laughs> if there uh, is explosives, they better let us know because we can use that to our advantage. <laughs> uh, Annie, you are surrounded and things are dying around you. Yes. Uh, I will use my bonus action to disengage because I forgot I could do that for a moment. <laughs> Good plan. Uh... Actually, ah, no, well, 21. <laughs> Go to here. Okay. Maybe. So, now, yeah. now from where you are, you can see that the corner of the wagon is on fire, and there are the flaming corpses of numerous other hyenas uh, around. Oh, the I'll actually go to there so I can see this dude. And uh, I shoot with my, my shark bow. All right. You're aiming at uh, this guy? Uh, no. Uh, no. I... Oh, okay. Yeah, the arrow seems to fly uh, off. Uh, maybe it's because he's sort of standing partially behind the log and you had to adjust your aim, but you adjusted it too high and the arrow goes flying over his head. Yup. Uh, that's bonus action move. All right. Uh, their turn. Uh, let's see. This one that was attacking... Uh, actually, he's going to step over. Uh, whoops. Be hidden for a moment. With the He's eating the horse? Shouldn't the he be fighting? Jeez. Horse guts that are there. No, uh, kind of stepping over the corpse of the horse uh, and kind of leaping forward with, with uh, both hands to rake at Melora. Uh, let's see. Uh, it says uh, bite, but it's actually the same, the same roll. Uh, and that hits. And Melora is kind of scraped down the, the front Let's out a uh, a rather, you would think, uh, painful cry, but it comes out more as a, a an annoyed grunt. Uh, let's see, the one in front of Patrock is going to try to lean in to uh, bite at him as well. Uh, misses. Petrock, maybe because he had the bow out and fired frantically at the one in front of him, uh, is is sort of semi off his feet and manages to be just in the right way off his feet. Uh, meanwhile, down at the other end, uh, this one, having suffered a bit of flame, is chasing after 
Uh, Medric. And then we'll try to strike at Medric. Nipping at him. Uh, does nope. a 15 hit? Nope. Nope. All right. The two surrounding... Um, the two surrounding Silas uh, kind of look at each other with this sort of uh, knowing look, like they feel like they've cornered something, even despite the fact that you've kind of uh, uh, been bashing away at them, uh, and both kind of lunge forward at uh, Silas. Uh, 20 probably hits. Ew. Grappling onto, uh, grab, kind of leaps forward and, and, and bites out towards the hand holding the staff. Um, which is a little harder to move out of the way. And the second one is 17. Um, yeah, 17 hits. Uh, as it, uh, as the, the other one kind of finds uh, the moment in which the other one is grappled onto your hand briefly to bite onto that same arm closer to the shoulder. And finally, this guy. Um... Uh, from wor further back, kind of noticing that you have a bow and letting out this this laughing um, hyena laugh once more, uh, raises its hands and kind of uh, moving its its hands back and forth. Purplish energy uh, draws forth into them once more and lets both hands go outward. Uh, one against uh, Annie and one against uh, Petrok. So the first one against Annie... There's a 19 hit. Yes. So it hits you and kind of moves, doesn't really even uh, affect, well, affects the, the, the outer surface of your clothing a little bit. It looks a little bit more worn and jagged, but you feel it more in the very core of your being. Uh, that's three necrotic and five force damage to you. And the second strike against uh, uh, Petrok... Petra, it misses. Um, he kind of sees it coming and, da and dashes a little bit uh, or leans a little bit to one side, hiding just behind the, the uh, creature in front of it, and the other one adjusts its aim ever so slightly not to hit that instead. Uh, let's see. It is Kara's turn. Kara, sitting towards the back of, of the wagon, sees the wagon on fire, Feels it shaking ever so ever so much. Um, looks back and forth uh, to the the one up front, attacking Medric, and the two that are attacking uh, Silas, and will attempt to fire a bow shot at the one attacking Silas. But with the the thing moving back and forth, it makes it difficult. So it will be at disadvantage uh, and misses, unfortunately, as the arrow goes flying out the back. Melora sets down her bow, reaches to a short sword that she has at her side, and is attempting to defend herself against the uh, the massive creature in front of her. But isn't having much luck trying to hit it. It's it's almost looks as though um, it's mocking her with its laughter, and you can see her anger seem to sort of rising. Medric. All right, I was going to summon Graveler, but uh, we got too much trash up front. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, because someone went out back. Oh, what? <laughs> I had to go somewhere. <laughs> there was trash <laughs> in the back, too. Uh, can I... The wagon's covered, you said, or no? Yes, with canvas. Okay, so I'll go... Can I, could I see stuff from here? Uh, you can see out the front. Okay, that's all I need. And that reminds me, since it's your turn, we'll expand the fire across the wagon in the back. Uh oh. So, right here, let's do a fireball again. Okay. It hits every single one of them, but not Kara, uh, not, not the uh, driver. Find and you managed exactly the same damage. 
Hey. Okay. All right. Uh, we, we will start with, uh, wow, okay, 24 damage. That's nasty. Well, and I'll that, retreat back to where Graveler was. <laughs> that, uh, Actually, no, I won't retreat for back. Those, uh, because they cannot save strong enough. So the hyenas are once again uh, easily taken out by this ball of fire, um, including the pet. Oh. Uh, this guy. Can save and could actually survive. So let's have him roll the save. That was dexterity, right? Yep. Uh, DC does 13. save. Oh. So he takes half damage. Still looks quite badly burned up and all that. And howls. Um, Crispy. Yeah, howls angrily at it. He does burn up the um, burn up the uh, the corpse of that horse that's right there too. Uh, yeah. And this guy. Mmm, steak. <laughs> uh, let's see. It doesn't have to be close enough to hit the caster, does it? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was uh, quite, quite handily it was right against here. it, however. Oh, damn it. So he does take damage, but not nearly as much. So I only moved two squares so far. Hopefully he's got a concentration spell up. Although, if he did, I think he wiped it all out anyways. He does not, and it probably would have succeeded anyway. Three. So I'll jump out of the wagon and next do this guy. Okay. Hopefully, like, grab Agra from that hyena. Or, no, whatever. Annie! Activate Graveler! If I can get to it. Oh, uh, the buddy behind me would have had an opportunity to attack too, probably. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Let's see if he's able to strike you. Yes. Damn it. Thank you for your honesty. Your sacrifice will be appreciated. Wah, wah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do I have any hyenas left? I don't think I do. I think they're all gone. So, in fact, I'll remove that from the initiative. Uh, Petrock uh, throws his bow aside to try to strike this thing with a sh with a short sword that he's hey, I so far not uh, had much luck with. Uh, and unfortunately does not seem to strike true. Um, uh, the rest of the forest on that area might be on fire too, by the way. <laughs> that's a good point, yeah. The... Hey, let, let, let me draw a circle. I'll draw a square. Oh, well, you can draw the square. That's right. I forgot I can draw circles, which probably makes it a little more accurate. Um, uh, not that it's absolutely necessary, but might as well just for fun. Ah, shoot. Why make it so hard for me? <laughs> All right. Ah, well, screw it. <laughs> uh, it's actually not the right size anyway, but that's okay. All that's on fire. Fire, fire, <laughs> fire everywhere. Um, shoot, that's still not accurate because it's larger than that. I don't know why I'm becoming obsessed with this. You started this. All right. Hi, Forrest. Uh, I bring the word of Ignis. <laughs> yeah. This is why Ignians aren't welcome into, hunt, into uh, forest camps. Uh, so now I'm completely. Oh, D Petrock tried and failed. Silas, you're up. Okay. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure Silas can't actually put out the fire. So, uh, the fire is the least of our concerns right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So he will hex the guy below him. Okay. And then swing at the guy next to him with the booming blade. As soon as I can find my character sheet again, there we go. Uh, that's Twenty to hit. Strike. 
That's definitely and that is 11 bludgeoning and 4 thunder. Okay, because you're costing so 15 with total. Higher levels, right? Nope. Um, it's a cantrip. Right, but it, because you're casting at higher levels that it does damage initially. Normally it doesn't do until you get to... Well, just because I, ha just cause I am a higher level. Yep, I don't yep. have to cast at a higher level. Yeah, um, sorry. So yeah, 15 uh, damage total. 15 damage total. Not dead, but not happy. No. Uh, as the sort of, again, the boom goes, uh, goes careening across all the forest around as well. Uh, let's... Uh... And yeah, I think as a bonus action, I'm gonna use. Oh, never mind. No, I, I hexed as a bonus action. Never mind. Okay, and you're not moving anywhere. I'm assuming. Nope. Stefan, one more chance to try to get these horses under control. Um, no. Uh, with that, uh, the horses start to jostle the wagon back and forth. Uh, I need Silas to make a dexterity saving throw as the wagon is moving back and forth and threatening to hit you in the back. Does that one uh, Noel have to make a dexterity saving throw too? Because he's right there too. Um, yep. Let's see here. I failed it. Quiet. Yeah, no problem from that. Uh, you do take oop, oop, too many windows. Two points of bludgeoning damage as the wagon kind of shifts and, and shakes and kind of collides with your back. Uh, it still seems to be uh, under less control, and probably the fact that it's partially on, partially on fire also not helping it. Uh, Stefan is swearing now, trying to hold on. You can hear the crack of the whip, but that doesn't seem to be helping all that much at this point. Annie. Oh, um, do, 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 do. Sorry, one I... more thing. Uh, okay, no problem. Uh, you see, as the as the horses are jostling back and forth, they're basically kicking out and shifting in all directions, making this alley essentially dangerous terrain. And this knoll that's here actually had to sort of shift out of the way in order Trample. to fight. Yeah. Uh oh, ow! Stop. My my cat has returned. <laughs> she has I'm been fed. She just wants attention. She she sounds angry. Um, she's always well, not angry, just just demanding. Yeah. Oh, she's she wants out of the room. Okay, I'm just gonna open the door real quick. Sure, I'm just gonna extend some fire. Cool. Uh, I just need to know actually from Nax where Graveler is, because I, I I would have known where he had it. I just the uh, backpack. Yep, on okay. the back of the wagon. Cool. Um. All right. I will brave difficult terrain to get into the wagon to get Graveler. Okay, make a dexterity saving throw. You got this! I'm good at those. Everybody says that and then roll no. on. No. Oh, uh, I, I, I wasn't going to say it, but I'm sorry I thought it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. As you're getting on the, onto the wagon, one of the hooves oh, kind of, uh, re, uh, hits you square in the back of the head. Propelling you forward into the wagon. You hear a little bit of laughter from the knoll beside you. It may not actually be cool. laughing at you, but it certainly sounds like that. Uh, I am looking really bad. Uh, I grab the backpack and get Graveler. Okay. Uh, and activate him. All right. Gotta so say you say the word. The, the words. <laughs> Same motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker, get out here. Uh, let's see. It's gonna Probably as, as I'm like getting damage, I'm like, ah. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just going to pick him up from another map, I think. Uh, one second. Rather than try to recreate, oh, I'm still drawing fire. <laughs> All right. There's only fire. Zool. Well, the fire is going to burn the tree that's across the road, so you know it, it kind of works. It, it is kind of useful, to be fair. 
I mean, the clearing will definitely happen now. All right. And he's at his full health. Uh, I do not have control of him. No, I just I just put him on the map. I have to. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I, I just don't have control of his character at all. What? Uh, there was something with, with vision or something like that that, like, in one of the maps it was causing issues. I will see if I can set that for you right now. Where he is, there he is. Oh. I'm fine with Nax just controlling him though, because Nax has control over him anyway. Yeah, just tell me where, where you want him to go and I'll move him. Uh, to well, well it, this, this, this is your plan, you can control him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there. All the players should be able to access the character sheet now. And uh, I'll see if I can make sure the token Determine my character setting. So everybody should be able to, to grab and, and see Graffler and look yeah. up the Zorn Guardian character sheet, which is under... Um, I think it was interfering with the, like, lighting thing. It's possible. In, yeah, it's for possible. me, so... I think that's why we took me off it. Where's his initiative? I'm looking at the character sheet right now. Oh, in it. Yep. There we go. Graveler will be in it uh, shortly. In it, but that's like not really to win it, because that's shitty initiative. <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of average initiative. It just was a whole lot of people up around twenty. So yeah, I suppose <laughs> specifically so, yes, twenty one. <laughs> the, the the rock kind of uh, unfolds into the familiar form of Graveler, who looks at you with the uh, three eyes and the three hands, kind of almost like it's reaching out for a hug. It hasn't seen you for a little while. But then there's a sort of a knoll right beside it, which goes. Uh, that is my move. That is my bonus action, uh, or my action. And as my bonus action, uh, actually, uh, I do not have any healing crystals. Yeah, uh, I'm going to disengage from. Or no, I can't because I have no more movement. Um, no, that's my equipment, not my actions. Uh, I will give Graveler advantage to hit that null. Okay. What do you say to Graveler? Graveler, help! <laughs> Is he going to bite first? Uh, the Knoll will have an opportunity before before Graveler has a chance, yes. So, speaking of the Knolls, uh, let's see, that one's not happy with that. So, let's just see what the space looks like. Yeah, why not? That strange one moves closer and kind of moves into the fray for the first time. Uh, Medric, as it moves closer, you notice that this one seems to have blackened scars all over its body, carved into uh, strange symbols that mostly represent spirals uh, uh, that fold over themselves. Some of them cut, with, uh, cut through the spirals with additional symbols. Something very, very strange. And while the other ones had a bit of purple glow to their eyes, this one seems to almost have a purple haze that trails behind it uh, as it moves around. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that was right there attacking both of them is going to shift around uh, Medric. Melora will get a chance to strike at him before he leaves. Um. That one's taken fireball damage too, right? Uh, and does hit, actually. Uh, uh, yes, it did. It is looking pretty badly burned, um, but kind of getting away out of that. Um, let's see. Uh, it's then going to strike at you, though, with its uh, remaining okay. uh, moment. 
seven doesn't hit. Nope. Uh, as it kind of weakly uh, strikes out at you and kind of half catches the horse beside it. But the horses are, are, well, relatively calm. They seem to have a lot of trust in Melora, who who gained control of them earlier, but their their eyes are kind of watching everything that's going around. And actually, at this moment, probably more distracted by the massive blazing fire that's only a few feet away. Uh, let's see. Uh, I wanted to check. I think I got that right. Hmm, okay. Uh, let's see. Well, first off, the one facing off against Petrock will strike once more. Uh, critical oh, hit. Oh, no! Uh, Petrock is wounded badly. Let's see. Still not a, a huge roll, but uh, wounded badly from, from the uh, strike from the knoll in front of it and lets out a loud cry. Uh, let's see. The knoll beside uh, Annie and the strange thing that's just formed um, will, let's see, strike at Annie, I think, because she seems like the more chewable of the two. You get the impression that it's... Well, that is offensive of, to rocks. Kind, kind of measuring that up. Well, rocks aren't really chewable. you got to admit that. Uh, uh, as strikes out okay. at Annie from there. Um, and kind of grapples in, sticking in uh, 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 its jaw to kind of rear back and pull out some flesh that it swallows. How is Annie doing? Annie's on mute. Oh, no. That's bad. <laughs> I had five hit points. Oh, no. Uh, it's it's grappled on to your... your, uh, your, your, uh, your uh, lifeless flesh, or your unconscious flesh, probably intending to walk away with a meal. Uh, let's see here. You thought, uh, fuck it, Will. <laughs> the two surrounding... Um, the two surrounding... Uh, Silas will take their attempts. Uh, does the Hex damage their attack? Doesn't do anything to them. Okay. Except for if they try to gra grapple me. Uh, oh. 22. That's a hit. So one of them kind of nips in, uh, this time grabbing at your other arm. And 16. Nope. Um, the other one misses this opportunity. Is they're kind of working across purposes. One grabs you by, by uh, the arm, kind of yanks you out of the direction of the other. All right. Let's see what I'm going to do for this guy. But that strange one that moved closer to use uh, Medric. Let's see. <coughs> uh, oh. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, hmm. Okay. Um, oh, I got to check the map here. I think that range works too well in its favor. Okay. Um, hmm. Actually, at this point, it's just going to let loose with. Oh, wait, no. Sorry, I have to. That I'm, I'm having to switch so many windows. I keep losing track of where I was, <laughs> where I was working on it here. Um, hmm. Well, I think it's just going to let loose with another spark of. Oh, no, you're right beside it. Nope, it's just going to bite and bite and claw at you. Uh, Me? Medric. Yep. Okay. So. Um, it uh, swings out with one arm, trying to slash away at you. Uh, Thirteen doesn't uh, hit. No. Uh, cr scratches across your armor. Second claw, nineteen. Oof. Oh, uh, nineteen. Ah, oh, crap! I don't have the shield activated yet. Does it? Okay. Um, it kind of just where it missed the other time. The the shield was knocked just out of the way for it to stab forward, 
and then it lunges forward with its enormous jaws. Uh, 22 to hit. Yep. Uh, four piercing, and make a constitution saving throw. As you feel ooh, this, 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 this ugly smell coming from its mouth, and its teeth uh, bite down deep into your shoulder, and a stinging, burning sensation. Fuck's sakes. As you find yourself uh, suffering some sort of poison. God damn it. Seven points of poison damage. Is it lingering poison or is it like... It's No, it's just instantaneous. It's more like an acid in this case. All right. Um, Kara. Um, once again, trying to measure back and forth. Uh, Stefan still has not gotten control of the horses. Uh, will attempt to help Silas by once more firing at this knoll. Um, hasn't been so good for her so far. Again, the shaking of the wagon makes it with disadvantage, but that is a great roll. Uh, it does manage to strike true. And beside nice. you, you see one of them struck by an arrow. Uh, it howls in pain. Whoops, that's not the right thing. Uh, it does not take that much damage. It takes this much damage. Uh, and the arrow embeds in its shoulder. It seems to, for a moment, consider whether it wants to go after the arrow uh, fire rather than you. Um, she's not going to... Uh, There's not really a safe way out for her. She's going to stay where she is. Um, Melora. What, what, is, what is going on here? I think somebody has a noisy snack, snack. bar. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was, like, I was trying happened? to get to my chocolate. And I uh, it's, it's, like snack. it's like the crippling noise, it's like that crackling noise of the fire, right? It's That's true. Right. That's just everything's a, on a, fire. A foley for the <laughs> massive burning f conflagration going on right now. Uh, Melora does Melora is see to, how bad looking that other hyena is? Uh, I hope the she one does. beside you, yes, he is yeah. moving over. This isn't quite the same spot. She's basically just moving over to the other side of the wagon, and kind of actually no, uh, no, no. She does have her short sword out, and we'll try to stab at that. Um, Kill it. Unfortunately, it's just a little bit out of her range because it's she doesn't want to hit the horse that's right there uh, and kind of leans over a little bit too far and ex overextends herself and misses it. Uh, Medric. All right, I, I see Annie has gone down. Uh, I'm assuming I can see like through the back of the wagon if they're open Pretty like much, in yeah. front and she would, the back. She was okay. standing and then she went down and not in a graceful hiding kind of way. Uh oh. So you can't. All right, really well, see she's going to get a. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't really see her from where you are because you're down on the ground and the, the actual seat of the wagon is blocking your view, but you know where she is. All right. Cure wounds is touch, right? Damn it. Yes. So Annie will get a healing word. Uh, is that vision? You do need vision. Yeah, I thought I could see her though. Or... You saw her go down and then you can't see her now because your vision is blocked by the front of the wagon. But I'm six foot six. I could. I'm like. I, I raise above the wagon. Um, I'll I'll allow you right? to make a perception tech check to kind of hop okay. up and see if you can spot her, and then cast the spell this <laughs> time. Hop hop hop. Perception is plus two. Oh. Unfortunately, fuck. with everything that's going on, and with Melora moving uh, over to one side, you just can't catch sight of her in time. All right. Well. Uh... I will take a swing at. How bad does the uh, caster one look? The one that just like took fifteen hit points, hit like HP from me. Um, he looks a little bit singed, but more determined than any of the others. And all right, so I'll smack more, the one more insane in a way. I'll smack the one in the back of me, the one that's like near death. Okay. Fuck's Unfortunately, sakes. that's a miss. As the, he kind of leans behind the horse a little bit, making it a hard hit for you. And spiritual weapon will come out. All right. Whoosh. Spiritual weapon. Where are we here? Um, what do I have that listed under? Where did it go? Um, spell effects. That must be it. No. Where are you? You guys are gone. Oh, characters. There we are. Sorry. 
lost track of it for a second or two there. Um, just let me controlled by you. So you can put it where it should appear. Right here. Okay. And I'm assuming it's taking gonna... a swing as it does. Oh yeah. Fuck. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, once again, it's kind of dodging behind the horse. It actually hits the horse. Roll damage. Now it rolls high, of course. Clobbers the horse. Horse goes. Oh, fuck. I feel like this is like the decisive like moment of the fight, and I just rolled like absolute shit three times in a row. Well, with all the stuff going on around you, it, it gets a little bit crazy. Melora cries out with a little bit of dismay. Um, you get the impression that she's used those horses before. Um, but unfortunately, that horse is... I can bring them back. <laughs> I mean, you can. Maybe. That's, <laughs> that's technically something you can do. Um, you have a movement if you want to move. No. Okay. Graveler's up. Uh, wait. Uh, I do want to move, yeah. Okay. Might be risky. Where, where are you moving? Okay. Back so, in the wagon. Okay. It's basically another five feet just to get on the wagon itself. So yeah. just keep that in mind. And now you can see that Andy is indeed down. The horses are rearing at the other end. Graveler is here, however, and about to do something. What is Graveler about to and do? Do those other jackasses get opportunity attacks? Hopefully they don't roll well, but... Oh, yeah, they do. Thank you. Both of them are just one. Uh, they both do, because they're both flanking you. Uh, the one that bad vibes. You, oh, there's, uh, that's good. 11? Bad vibes. Or 11? bad vibes. 11 doesn't hit? Okay. Nope. Um, and this one will uh, claw at you. 15? No. Okay. You managed to, to evade both of them, um, leaving Melora to face them both. Uh -oh. As Graveler does, does a heckin' punching or no, a heckin' biting. biting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is right? I, I got his scared. Damn it! I closed it. It's gonna chomp. So the. Oh, sorry, that's you, me. Uh, that misses as he tries to kind of angle himself to chomp, and it's it's already kind of dancing a little bit anyway because of the craziness of the space, but... Then it's going to claw three times, so... Claw one. Miss. Fuck! Claw two. That one hits. Okay, good. So a very strong hit finally collides with it, uh, tearing into it and ripping a large chunk out of its, out of its uh, side of its head. Claw number three. That misses. Wow. That's a lot of ones. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, it's it's maybe the the wagon has shifted just a little bit with the horse falling over now. Um, but the the uh, uh, graveler trying to assess where the heck it's been a, a summoned to because it's it's literally in the middle of everything, and the only thing it really knows is the person who brought it here just fell over, and there's a thing nipping at them so that's about all it knows right now hit it pretty much is graveler going to move or bonus action i don't think it has any bonus actions let me I look. don't think so but just giving you an option yeah. in case you thought of it or has one is it going to move mm, probably not okay it wants to help annie petrock trying to desperately um, stab away at this thing in front of him. You can hear him calling out, Are you okay in there? I'm sorry, he's, he's rougher than that, but are you okay in there? Ish. Medrick? And he takes a swing and misses, unfortunately, trying to hit the, the thing in front of him. Uh, he's not going to move. He has no bonus action. Silas, you're up. Oh, I forgot to extend the fire. Pardon me. One moment. Fire grows bigger.
the wagon now is effectively cut in two because of the fire that's burning across it. Okay. Silas is going to move to here, so he's not next to the fire. Okay, and the wagon as well, which was threatening to hit him the ass. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, he's uh, going to swing at this one. Actually, no, he'll swing at the one he's hexing, just in case he needs the damage. 25 definitely hits. Uh, and that is a dexter... No, it's, it just does damage, doesn't it? Yep. Uh, so 12 is... normal damage, 2 thunder damage, and 2 necrotic damage. So, so you, 16 total. You crack it across the top of the head. The thundering goes off, and you see its its uh, its head kind of sink several inches into its neck as it crushes its neck and dies. Kind of <laughs> collapses into a pile. Then I'm going to healing word myself. Oh. For three points. Oh. Okay, that was move, bonus, and action. Yep. Okay. Stefan. Um, Stefan can can smell the smoke behind him uh, and swears, reaches down, and just cuts the, uh, or starts to unlatch the horses rather than trying to calm them. So the wagon is still shifting and moving, uh, but I'll allow him a roll to try to unlatch one of the horses this round. That's just going to be a straight up athletics. Yeah, no problem. So one of the horses is now free. I'm going to say it's the one on the on the uh, right. And it's going to immediately run its full movement to get the hell away from all of this. Can it drop kick a knoll on the way? It's not going to pay attention to anything except getting away from the fire. Um in fact, runs way. It is there. feared. Very much afraid. Uh, the other one's still kicking and bucking. Stefan is going to try to do something about that soon. Annie, you're up. Uh, I'm saying. Okay, Successful that's death. a pass. Hey. Great, great. One saved. Uh, the Knolls. This is a dangerous place for this Knoll to be, so it's going to try to get the hell out of there. Do -do -do. Uh, let's see if it can do this. Yes. Uh, so manages to to run away to try to attack uh, Petrock. That does give an opportunity attack to... Oh, Dabble. yeah. Can it be a claw or a bite, or can I just pick which one? Um, bite wouldn't have quite the range, so I'm going to say claw. Okay. Rawr. Uh, unfortunately. Damn it. Swing and a miss. It's just too far away. Too Too crafty at getting away. Uh, and then going to strike at Petrock. And hits. Uh, kind of uh, biting away as, as Petrock tries to pull back to swing the uh, sword, grappling onto the hand, and you can hear Petrock uh, uh, howling in pain. That's its turn. Kara. Kara, with the fire nipping away at her heels, makes this takes this opportunity to get off of the wagon. Uh, we'll try not to fall. Stumbles a bit. We'll take a little extra movement to get off carefully. Gets to there. Um, doesn't understand what's going on in the back of that wagon. Although, no, she saw she's a graveler appear and Annie go down. Uh, she'll take a pot shot at this at this knoll. <laughs> and the arrow goes right through hey. one ear and, it, and comes exploding at the front of its head. Uh, it goes down in a heap. Uh, Melora. Yeah, good job! <laughs> Uh, Melora is, is is looking at the the dead horse, dead horses, um, and you're going to just simply um, shout and swear and attack at the knoll that's there with your sword. Fuck him up. Uh, unfortunately, that's a miss. 
as she swings downward and it catches on to some of his uh, hide, cutting cutting the, the hide that he has wrapping around him, but otherwise leaving him unwounded. And she swears. Medric, you're up. I'll move next to Annie and cast Cure Wounds at level three. You get 25 HP. Nice. Oh, epic roll. Yeah. Above half. Oh, yeah. Way above half. <laughs> but five and above the half. The spiritual weapon will take a swing in that knoll again. Okay. That one hits. That is a hit. Smack. And uh, that knoll... Uh, while paying attention to Melora and kind of uh, jeeringly um, uh, moving towards to strike her, gets hit and smack in the back of the head by the uh, spiritual weapon and goes down. And little bits and pieces of its skull and the, its contents on fire just like <laughs> scatter all over the place. Splash, away from Melora. Splashing over Melora and... Yeah. yeah. No, no, away from Melora. Oh, okay. <laughs> and just like... Burn to a crisp on the bridge. Okay. Fuck that guy. Uh, that is your bonus in action. You still and you did a little bit of movement. You still have a little bit left. You Two, can see now the other wagon three, nearly four, engulfed in fire. Five. Six. I'll step on that guy's corpse or uh, occupy its spot. <laughs> okay. And from there you can strike at uh, Petrock. No. Else <laughs> <laughs> you want to. Three, four, five. Okay. Everybody yeah, takes an additional five to get. step off the wagon. So, yeah. Okay. Two, three, four, five. Okay, I have one, like five more feet. Because okay. I was like here to begin with. So, sure. five, one, ten, fifteen, two, twenty, twenty-five. We'll put you there. Three, four, five, mm -hmm. six. Okay. Okay. Graveler. One, two, three, and he's he steps off the wagon. Okay, so that's additional. That's four. What's his movement? Twenty. Yeah. Or should, he, is he still here? He, he would just get there. Yeah. Okay. So so is he like right here, or can can he be here? No, he's basically right there, but on the ground. Okay. And he makes like stone rumbling noises, I guess. Okay. The whole wagon kind of shifts as he moves across it. He's so heavy. Uh, and as he kind of steps on that extra edge, the whole wagon kind of bends down a little bit under his weight as he steps over the, the front wheels. Definitely gets the attention of the uh, the other guy, however. Um, that's Graveler. Uh, he can take an action to sprint if you wanted to, which would give him additional movement. But he wouldn't be able to attack anyway. Yeah, let's do that. He's going to sprint to over here, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, Petrock um, sees you kind of stepping over beside him, grins. All right, I can do this. And tries to strike at the uh, one in front of him. Unfortunately, the other one is uh -huh. still too confident in what he's doing. Silas. You're muted. Oh. Uh, did this one get a chance to do anything? Because I don't think he has done anything since I killed the guy next to him. I thought he attacked but missed. Or I could be thinking of a different one. Uh, let me just back up to see if I can tell. Probably can't tell. Um, if you don't think he did anything, then he would take a quick attack. That's that's what he would do. Zarn Guardian. No... Yeah, no, I don't think the I don't think it did anything. Okay. Well, it only has kind of one thing to do, <laughs> mm -hmm. which would be make a, a uh, snapping bite towards you and misses. So now it's official. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna thump it with another booming blade. Oh, actually, I moved the hex to it because the first guy died. Okay. And then I thump I booming blade. Uh, 
uh, a seven nope. misses, unfortunately. Wow, you crit and fail at the same time. That's bizarre. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, you telegraph the motion enough that it uh, is aware of what's going on and, and moves out of the way. Yips a little bit as it does so. Yep, that's uh, all I got. Stefan. Stefan is going to try to release the other horse as the burning continues behind him. Oh, yeah, no problem. The other horse is released. Sees the crowd in front, doesn't go running in the same direction as the other, but does go running back up the road. As you see one another horse fly on by you. Annie, you're conscious. I'm conscious. Uh, it, it I will... just as bad you're like a two-thirds of your HP. Yeah. Uh, I will get up and use five feet of movement to get out. Actually, no. I will move to here. Uh, And I would like to shoot this guy. All right. He prefers not to be shot, but that's not really up to him. It really isn't. (laughs) Just give me two seconds. (laughs) Kind of walk up, draw the bow, aim, and then say, just give me two seconds. (laughs) As he goes, goes, I, I, I. <laughs> I would like to use one of my darts. Okay. Oh, wow, the forest is or, totally no, on fire. No, I just Graveler's there. Up. Never mind. <laughs> Gra- Graveler's there. Never mind. I'll just use an arrow. I realize there are people right beside it. Hey, I actually oh, hit something. Definitely a hit. Nice. And For 10 damage. Substantial damage. Uh, the hit hits it, uh, the arrow hits it solidly in the stomach. It reels back a few a few uh, inches, uh, surprised and kind of, you get this almost maddened expression on its face uh, as, it, uh, as it sees the wound and the blood starts seeping out of it. And then I would like to move back. Uh, and may I lay down flat on my tummy and hide? Uh, you may, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something that you should probably remember. You yeah. just fired at an, uh, an, an enemy who had an ally nearby. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. yeah. Grab there. Sneak attack. Oh, right. Sneak attack. Additional oh, seven damage. Nice. <laughs> kind of pop your head up a little bit. Fwang. Never knew what hit it. Well, it did, because there's a large arrow sticking out of its chest. But it was still a bit surprised by it. Uh, and I would like to disappear on my belly. All right. You're going to hide. You're very much gone. <laughs> no one will know where you are, and you'll just bleed right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a rogue once who hid and then fell on a trap and no one could find it where he fell. No. Yep. <laughs> yep. I've had that happen. I, I've had that happen in a campaign too. <laughs> it's very tragic and probably very typical for a lot of rogues. Uh, let's see what is left of the knolls. There's one there and there's one there and that's just about it. And that one guy there. Okay. Hmm. Do they feel like their odds are still in their favor? Uh, they work better in teams. What is the range here? Uh, no, it's gonna have to. It's gonna have to deal with the the crazy old man standing beside it as this knoll down here proceeds. To Get off to, my lawn! Tries to bite <laughs> at uh, Silas once more. Don't know if there's much else you can really do there. Um, and a seven doesn't hit. So he is going to try to move away. You will have an opportunity attack. Fuck. Oh, I got more than that. He triggers the sonic damage. Hey. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> right. Oh, wait. Uh, no, no, I missed him. Never mind. Uh, Dang it. Oh, First yeah. time it would have happened. Yeah. Uh, okay. So just a uh... regular old reaction attack. Unfortunately, misses. <laughs> Why are you rolling so many ones? I don't yeah. Know. 
There's so many ones resulting in so many sevens. It's a little bit creepy. Um, actually, that is the opposite this. of a lucky number. <laughs> Sorry, it gets to go right to there. So not quite caught up with the rest of you. Uh, let's see. Kara. Kara sees this new target. Kara will take a, t a pot shot at it. Actually, it's more of a desperate shot. Uh, desperate shot that... Oh, I don't need the hyena page up anymore. You killed all my hyenas. Very efficiently. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, that uh, that kind of weak shot uh, bounces off the, the hide, leaving a cut through it, but not actually connecting. Um, Kara swears and stays where she at, she's at because it's not too unsafe. Melora. Uh, Melora is going to work with Graveler. Hopping down onto the ground now uh, and stepping forward. She's kind of staggering a little bit but hoping that the large creature that's beside her is actually on her side. Uh, and you can kind of hear from the other end, you bastard. Those are my favorite horses. Ooh, and hits, and <laughs> hits with a strike. Uh, does damage, uh, which is a pretty... Uh, I guess she needs to swear more often. <laughs> Jake, you're, you're up. I will take a swing at jerk face in front of me and Petrock. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna take a what? You're gonna take a take a swing at Petrock too? No, uh, the, at, at the one in, standing in front of me in Petrock. Oh, okay. This yeah, dude. I, I put the wrong emphasis on the on the spot. <laughs> you were somehow attacking I might have both cut out of them. Too, yeah. Technology. All right. Ha! Fuck. Uh, that unfortunately is a miss. Uh, the spiritual as... weapon will move here and take okay. a swing at. Let me. Dude. That hits. Oh, yeah. That's a hit. Pop. For fourth damage. Okay. He's starting to look a little bit um, unhappy about his situation. Good. You have move if you want to. Oh, Petrock kind of looks like shit, so I, I won't leave him here by himself. Okay. And you kind of get this feeling as as he looks over at you, and although he's not having a lot of luck hitting, neither am of, I. <laughs> kind of like the Broke questions it. he had earlier about about you know you and how you became who you are and you fought in the war. You get this sort of sense of camaraderie, where he's looking over at you and and kind of with the sense of, I'm fighting beside the Phoenix champion. I'm and really we both fighting fuck here. Up. It's beside. okay. <laughs> I can do anything. <laughs> if, if, if I can be here, I can stand up. This is probably where he dies. But uh, Graveler is up. Graveler will fuck up the dude in front of him. Wait, he has a character sheet that I can roll from. Okay. Yes. I keep closing it because forget. So he will claw three times. Did, does he have advantage advantage at all or no? No. I hid. Okay, gotcha. Claw. Ha. Uh, that is a hit. Poof. Let's go for slashing. Claw again. Oh. Ooh, nice. Low damage. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. That's like karma for me laughing at you when you got low damage on the crit. <laughs> There's a double crit Club this again. time even. And the third oh. one hits. Nice. Yeah, he's looking very wounded now at this point. And the finishing touch. Is he going to end up in Graveler's mouth? Uh, that is a hit. I think that's a yes. Um, does that hit grapple, though? Hmm? It just bites. I it's not actually grapple, right? Let me check. I'm pretty sure it doesn't grapple. I just got to check. Yeah, no. You were just getting eager. I get that. Get. All right. All right. Hmm. All right, well, that's Graveler. He's not going to move, I'm assuming. No. 
Okay. Petrock. Petrock is going to try once more with his ally by his side. You might even say you possibly a hero. Unfortunately, oh. he's too too uh, uh, shaken up by the, the, the spirit of the moment and not able to connect. Silas. Oh, yeah, the fire keeps growing. So this one's up there, and we'll uh, take a booming blade shot at the uh, Ganole. Sixteen. Uh, Sixteen hits. Okay. Uh, that is four regular, one thunder, and five necrotic, so ten <laughs> damage total. Uh, let's see if he has that much. Uh, I just drew him on fire. Pardon me. That was the wrong uh, thing here. Uh, oh, he was pretty close to the wagon. He does not have that kind of life left. And in fact, collapses into a heap under your massive, uh, exploding, booming blast. Carrie, you hear Carrie kind of, oh, I almost had him. I mean, yay. Uh, do I see anyone that looks injured badly? Aside from yourself, well, Petrock, yeah. Petrock looks terrible. Okay, I'll use the last of the healing words from the ring on Petrock. For six healing. Nice. He's looking. Yeah, Max is out when I'm not healing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was your. Yeah, that's everything. Um, using a spell from that is still an action, right? Uh, healing word's a bonus action. Oh, healing word. Okay. Yep. Okay. That was your move action and bonus. Uh, let's see. Stefan. Hmm. I think at this point, Stefan is going to step down off the wagon, which basically is burning behind him. <laughs> it, it, it sort of is a really cool moment that he's very calmly kind of stepping off the, the wagon drawing at a slow motion sword. the wagon's yeah, as, on fire behind as, him and he's as just the like... wagon kind of being consumed um but then it's kind of uh running up and he will run up to stand beside um hmm. let's see how far can he actually make it Melora? Uh, he can actually That's... run all the way around to stand on the other side uh, with his sword drawn, but unable to act at the moment, <clears throat> but kind of cutting off the retreat. Silas will say, uh, take him alive. Uh, okay. Annie, you're up. I just remembered we we're supposed to do that. Yep. Yep. I was going to just like pound him into the ground and then like resurrect him or uh, heal him for like a couple of HP <laughs> after he's tied up. Uh. Yeah, I'm going to uh, sit up and shoot. <laughs> okay. At this guy. Thwackity. Uh, actually, you know what? I will use one of the dark darts. Okay. Why not? Because fuck that guy in particular. <laughs> uh, uh, unfortunately, that misses. As the dart goes flying off into the fire. This is a small little... As it uh, explodes from the heat. Um, you have more motion, mo uh, movement. Uh, I will tell uh, Graveler to punch him in the face. Uh, or bite him in the face. And we'll fly flat again. <laughs> okay. So remember that... I'm not, uh, not going to hide, so... Remember that Graveler has that, uh, that uh, advantage on the next roll. Hey. Uh, let's see. They are determined to continue. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, this one in front of uh, the two of you. Still going to go after the, the weaker of the two. Uh, because that was what he wanted. And misses. Not so good on their own. Kara. Uh, let's see. Pew pew. Stepping a little closer. Stepping just around. We'll take a, a shot at her. She's done... Relatively well. And does again. Hey. As an arrow flies through the melee and uh, 
hits it solid in the shoulder. It 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 lets out a little yelp of pain. Uh, and the last guy, what is he gonna do? Hmm. How much does he feel like being vindictive? Uh, it feels quite vindictive, actually. So going to um, extend his hands out. You see that once again the the sort of purplish black energy faltering around them, and then extend in both directions, firing one at Stefan and one at uh, uh, Milara. So uh, first one goes to uh, Stefan. Uh, hits. No. Uh, ooh. Oh, he almost goes down. Um, and the second one at Melora hits, and Melora goes down as the energy washes over her. So that's a small, frustrated yelp as she cl collapses to the ground beside the two dead horses. And the other two dead gnolls. It's quite a ugly, actually five hit, uh, two dead gnolls and three more dead hyenas. It's a bloodbath up there. That's a terrible place to be. Um, oh, what did I do here? Oh, I hit the thing already. Okay. No, wait, what happened? Did I advance that too fast or did I mess something up? I don't know. So Silas, Stefan, Annie. The Knolls. The Knolls. Oh, so Kara shouldn't have gone yet. <laughs> oh, okay. But it doesn't change much if she does her action now. Uh, Melora, unfortunately, uh, will make a death save. Does not. Oh. Uh, Medric. Attack, do it in front of me. Okay. Warhammer. Smack. Fuck. Yeah, unfortunately, he's just too quick. What's wrong with my hammer? Bouncing back and forth. You almost get the sense that it's enjoying this. Um, sorry. Spiritual weapon. Move, spiritual weapon. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to hit dude. Yeah, all right, then. Or not hit dude. Yeah, unfortunately. The crackling and energy that's all around him seems to somehow deflect slightly the uh, the spiritual weapon. As you move up there, the knoll takes a swing yep. at you. Yep. Or rather, it takes a swing. May he roll low. 14? Not enough. Okay. Graveler's up. Graveler will claw, 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 bite. Or no. Grappler has advantage, right? to bite, bite the face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With advantage. Grappler will bite, claw, claw, claw. Okay. Um, no, 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 no. That's Ooh, definitely a hit. That's, yeah. No. No. So, Graveler leans forward, uh, grabs onto <gasps> the, the creature's he dead? mighty fangs, and bites him in two. I, I was going to be like... He'll grab him and like slam him on the floor, slam him on the floor again and again and again, and just like let go of his limp form. Okay. That's how Graveler will do this. Sure. <laughs> and sure. dude's almost torn in two, but not quite. Uh, and as he uh, collapses on the ground, you see a purple uh, uh, smoke almost seem to filter around the body and then dissipate. That's uh, Graveler's turn. Yeah, although he has extra movement, right? That was only his first attack? That was only his attack, yeah. One, two. He's going to go next to this knoll. Well, no. When he attacks, he makes all three attacks at once. Okay. Then he's going to go next to this guy and not attack anymore. Okay. Which is pretty threatening as it is. Um, Petrok is a little annoyed that his, his uh, partner in, in battle left him, but is going to try to impress him anyway. Stabbing forward. Finally hits. All he needed to do is not be seen. Uh, and you kind of get the impression that the knoll was following after Medric uh, as as you turned, 
which opened up an mm-hmm. opportunity for Petrock to stab him. Silas. Shunk. Let's see. Uh, Silas is going to kneel down and see if he can stabilize the knoll in front of him. Okay. Yeah, 17. You do manage to find where the, the wounds are, are bleeding the worst and staunch the wound. Uh, are you going to move or bonus? Um. Oh, actually, you would notice as well a sort of a sort of uh, a purplish uh, cloud leaving his eyes. They can become clear, animalistic, but still clear. Let's see. Well, I can't actually see anything. So no, he. Oh no! I, sorry, I can see that guy. Um. Yeah, I don't have any bonus actions I can use, really, so... No. Actually, he'll probably just move up there, but that would be it. Okay. Uh, Stefan. Where did he go? Oh, he must be under somebody. Oh, no, wait, he went all the way around to the other side. Yeah, he went by the knoll. Um, he stomps forward towards the other knoll. Determined. Ooh, and stabs him in the back. He's being picked upon now. Little bits and pieces on every side. Still not quite down, but close. Annie. Uh, which one's left? That one on the side? Yep. You can't see him from where you are because the side of the wagon. Yeah, that, that, that knoll is fucked. <laughs> I will jump yeah, down. He's, he's in pretty bad shape. I will go there. Completely consumed. Okay. Uh, and I will throw one of the darts at the gnome. All right. Finish him. That hits. I'm going to do this, and I will wait. I just need the not memorize this yet. Uh, disadvantage on next attack. Okay. As the thorns kind of spring up from the point on his shoulder where you hit him, you can see him kind of bound up a little bit uh, by these very sharp, piercing thorns that every time it tries to move, uh, stab into it, and it howls in pain and anger. And you get the impression, um, a bit of confusion as well. Um, And Silas, make a uh, perception check. I refuse. <laughs> no. Oh, wait. It's, it's an average wait, one from uh, feet away. Hmm? Uh, sneak attack because Graveler's there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, lots of people are facing off against him. Oh, well, in that case, um, it seems even more appropriate. As the vines wrap around him, um, Silas, you do notice having just sort of witnessed it a moment ago uh, as it, it, it looks around and howls in this sort of weird yipping way uh, and then proceeds to fall over, and a little dissipating wisp of purple smoke uh, seems to leave its form as it is dead. Uh, and that is, I believe, all of them. Yep. Yep, that's all of them. Uh, all right. Yep. Except for Tied the one the that's currently bleeding at your at your feet, Medrek starts or, or uh, Petrox start, starts to stalk over. I think this one's still alive and proceeds to swing with his yeah. sword at him. So I can't stand there and get away in the way of him. You can, yep. Because I did. I also yelled, "Take him alive!" Yep. He didn't even notice that because he was way too engaged in everything else. He just got caught up in the moment. He looks like he's going to take a swing. You. Step out and block him. Mm-hmm. Okay. He looks at you with confused eyes. What? Are, what are you doing? We can. We get need him. them for information. We. Information. Yes, we are going to be able to, to tell find. us. We're here to find out uh, who sent it. Um. 
Stefan is that going is a over fair to the point. other side. Whoops. Hmm? Stefan is going over oh, to the other uh, side and picks up uh, the prone form oh, of... No, leave her there. Laura. Leave her there. Um, anybody who needs healing, come next to me. And tie this knoll up, and I'm pointing at the leader. I can't even find you on the map. It's gotten a little bit busy. <laughs> I'm, I'm like right here next okay. to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let me move the, the things to the back here so they can yeah. actually be find, found. Um, Is the leader dead or unconscious? No, he's pretty dead, but I can most likely give him, an, uh, give him another breath. So make sure you restrain him so he doesn't run away. I'll go over and try to stabilize him. Okay. Okay. Because I was going to cast Prayer of Healing, which is like 2d8 for six yeah. people around me. But Prayer of Healing takes 10 minutes. Oh, fuck. It's an out of com or it's a purely out of combat thing. Well, we're out of combat, so yeah, let's do that. Yeah, but he'd be, he'd be either dead yeah. or alive well before uh, the spell goes ah, off. Damn it. So okay, yeah. I'm going to stabilize right, So let's, let, let's not do that. Okay, make a medicine check. Sixteen. Okay, you seem to have caught him at the point of death. Um, he's breathing even so barely, uh, very gray now. Uh, most of the blood seems to have drawn away. Even the skin is cold to the touch. And you can see this close up to him that uh, in his fur are all these strange mystical patterns that um, look like they are, are significant, made with claw marks, it appears. Uh, I will... Tie him up with the unbreakable rope. Okay. And then tie up the other one with regular rope. Okay. I'll cast cure wounds on a. Uh, you can still, uh, yeah, you can still do the prayer healing now. No, no, uh, no, no I, 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 won't, I, I keep forgetting it's ten minutes. So I'll cast cure wounds on Laura. She gets a hey, eight, eight, eight HP. Okay, her eyes blink open with uh, surprise. With uh, are the horses? HP? Still salvageable. No. Yeah, the horses are, are well and truly dead. Fuck. Except for the two that ran away. Except for away. the ones that ran away. Yeah. Except for what? Two of them okay. ran away. All right. There's a loud crack as the uh, main uh, center struts of the other wagon have just burned and fallen apart. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Petrock uh, walks or runs over, sees that uh, Melora is 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 blinking her eyes. Oh, that was close. That was really close. Are we taking this one too? All right. So I'm taking one point of damage because heal somebody else. All right. I should have taken like more points of damage from earlier when I healed Annie too. And the fireballs. All right. Let's see if you're still standing. <laughs> it won't let me select my character. Are you on a measurement thing? I don't think so. I'm on the arrow thing. I'll bring it to the front if that helps. Hmm? Oh, yeah. okay. I just have to like get out of the pile of clutter. <laughs> That's quite the pile. <laughs> so that was one damage. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Didn't know. Twenty-one, not one. <laughs> as Math. Nick just falls over Math is from hard. delayed, delayed self-blast fireball. Seven, six, four. Fuck Ignis, man. So half of that is how much? So seven plus six plus four. Eleven. Uh, That'd be seventeen. Half so. that would be eight and a half. Okay. Well, it's half so of like each eight. One. So three plus two plus two is seven. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. 14? Maybe? I, I can't do math on the fly. Oh, yes. You're at 14. Yes. So you're a little more ragged than you thought, but not, not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm kind of glad I forgot, because that means it was like less anxiety during combat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Petrock is looking at the two of them that are tied up and looking back and forth between the others. You can... Switch back, I guess, to the other screen. Um, uh, Silas is looking around and saying, what are we going to do about that fire? 
The woods are burning uh, down. We got to get people into the river. There is a lot of smoke now that starts to, to billow up from this. We can just down the bridge. The, the bridge is inflammable. I mean, it's it's actually doing a really good job given that there's an actual burning wagon at the other end of the bridge. And it's not spreading from there. But it does look as though the, the uh, long, dry uh, spell in this part, possibly caused by the massive change to weather nearby the actual city of Elthwater, um, has made this a bit more of a tinder. And you can see it burning off in both directions. Uh, Silas is going to go to the river with some scraps of cloth, get them wet, and bring them back to put over the mouths of the knolls and uh, his own as well, so we're not breathing in smoke. He'd suggest that others might want to do likewise. I'll be fine. I'll, I'll follow <laughs> what yeah. he's doing. Yeah. Um, Petrock and uh, Kara both go down as well to do the same and bring back something for um, Melora, who I should mark is not dead, <laughs> but is uh, feeling pretty pretty rough from uh, everything that just happened. And she keeps going over to the two dead horses and kind of uh, petting their manes. And I'll, I'll go next to her like, I'm sorry, I was aiming the hammer at the knoll, but it ducked. Uh, it's, it's not your fault. I wasn't expecting gnolls. I've seen them before. They don't look like that. And she points over at the, at the bigger one with all the all the markings. I've never seen that well, before. The markings? I've never seen anything like it. I think something might have been controlling them. Mm, there was a purple glow in the hyena's eyes before they burnt to flames. That might have been magic. Or at least, maybe not controlling them, but affecting them. We'll get answers yeah. out of them. Can Knowles even talk? And he has no clue at all. People consider them rather bestial, but I don't know. I can find out once they're awake. My talents work as long as I understand any language, even if it's not one I know. Good. Fair enough. I don't think anybody's ever talked to a knoll before, says Petrock. I've only yeah, heard the knolls have probably talked to each other. Oh, there's a first time for everything. Yeah. yeah. Too many first times today. He kind of glances back at the burning wagon. Although that was sorry a about nice that. Trick. Yeah, sorry about your wagon. Uh, Stefan uh, kind of sourly looks around. You can see he's very badly wounded, uh, but trying not to show it. We're going to you have okay? to find a, a way to. Uh, no, of course I'm not. I lost I'll give him horses. a cure wounds level one. This is going to attract scavengers, since he kind of points at all the bodies. Maybe even yeah, we're gnolls. gonna. Have to... Wait, so uh, that's two plus two, so he gets four eight, four eight points. Cool. I have to find him. <laughs> He's gone. And I map. get. <laughs> I'll get minus one. Or if it's a one, is it like rounded down? Do I even take a damage or no? Uh, it's it's minimum one, so. Yeah. Uh, where did he go? Oh, there he is. I couldn't find Stefan for the longest time. So two points. He gets four, uh, four, four. points. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he still looks pretty. Rough. I just forgot to add the modifier. He does appreciate it, although he looks a little bit askance at the at the flame which flickers out and covers him briefly, um, touching his eyebrows to see if they're still there. <laughs> We're going to have to find some shelter. It's We can walk back, but it's going to be a long walk. And we still have that wagon full of goods. If we want to can, follow after... Yeah, two horses from, that ran away. Can you get them back? I can go searching for them. I don't know how far they went away, but they're good, well-trained horses. They just got a lot of spooked from the fire and everything else. 
Understandable. Uh, you said the bodies would attract scavengers. We can toss them into the river. Make sure you search their bodies first, in case they hit they're carrying anything useful. I wouldn't recommend throwing them into the river. There's a lot of things no. falling off that river. And no, bodies you tend don't... to make things worse. Yeah, you don't want rotting corpses in some villages' water. We could probably drag them over to the fire. Yeah. Silas will Makes help sense. with that. And that log that was across the, the road is also uh, on fire. It'll burn for a while, though. It's a pretty large tree. Uh, let's see. Yep, and fortunately, there's no, no trees right next to the other side, so it's just grass. Insert a this is fine meme. <laughs> somebody, this is somebody, this the entire group yeah, right now. Somebody should, should sit on the wagon with with the nothing but dead horses, the flaming corpses around, and trees, and just capture. This is fine. This is fine. Um, Petrock turns to Medric. So, what do we do now? We burn the bodies so they don't attract scavengers, and we carry these two for questioning. Somebody uh, is going to go look for the horses. And once this log burns, we can find a safe location to rest. Melora stands up kind of kind of uh, uh, weakly, uh, finally gets, gets her feet. You can look, there's a look of grim determination on her face. As long as I don't encounter any more of those things, I can find the horse. And she goes off towards, starts heading off towards the, the uh, sort of northeast. Should I'll ask Graveler, I'll... I'll Give the command to Graveler to follow her and keep her safe. She looks a little dubious at the at the creature, but nods. He'll be, he'll be with you for an hour. Once he leaves, you should come back. That way, you're not alone. If I haven't found that horse in an hour, I'm not going to find that horse tonight. It's still more worried about, about you midday. finding something else, or something else finding you. I'll be careful. I'm not dying again today. And she, you can see her kind of stomping determinedly away. And there's a there's a sense of she's not just going after the horse. She can't look at the two dead horses any longer for a while. She oh. needs time. Uh, Stefan says, um, I'll go in the other direction. Kara, you come with me. And Kara looks over at the old man that she was sitting beside. You're not so bad, old man. In fact, you're pretty damn good. You're a lot more spry than you look, aren't you? Sorry? Oh. Mind wonder. <laughs> um, sorry, who was saying that? Kara. Uh, might as well drop the illusion. Like, nope. I Just undercover. It. I knew it. I mean, I didn't know it was you. I've, 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 I've heard you perform. You're pretty good. Thanks. And then Stefan Silas has a need, fan girl. <laughs> we need to go. And Kara and and uh, Stefan head towards the other direction to find the other horse, leaving you with uh, Petrock. Actually, just you and Petrock. He's the only one left behind. Petrock is mm -hmm. looking like he should go with one of the two, but he's not really sure. And uh, I just grabbed everything. That was not my intent. Um, do you tell Petrock to go in any particular direction? If he's no. if he's going to go some uh, go somewhere to look for the horses, I would prefer him going with Melora, so that they're paired off at, at the very least. Yeah. All right, uh, we'll be back soon. And he jogs to catch up with Melora. Leaving we'll guard the prisoners. Leaving three of you inside the massive forest fire, safe on the bridge, aside from the burning wagon, which at this point is more uh, slow burning at this point. The canvas went up quickly, but after that, uh, oiled canvas has burned very well, is something you've learned today. Um, but now it's kind of into the main uh, boards of it and the main board that are the main uh, beams that hold the center have already broken so it's mostly just a comfortable forest fire if you will or comfortable uh, uh, not forest fire comfortable um, bonfire bonfire thank you 
And we weren't traveling with any cargo because we're literally just bait, right? There is cargo. Uh -oh. There is, there is actual much. cargo. Please it, tell me it was in the front wagon. Yeah. It wasn't a lot, but yeah, he said there were there were some uh, boxes of cargo on there. Yeah, so they did, you know, if you did get stopped, it would look legit, and there was things that could potentially. It wasn't the cargo that he was rumoring to have. Um, you're not sure exactly what the rumors were because he never told you and you didn't ask. But basically, uh, he did have cargo in the, on board, and one of them still has cargo. The other wagon is actually in great shape. But that's where we're going to leave you with a decision about what to do next, whether you want to try to charge off after these knolls or which, which direction they went to, if you're going to try to put out the forest fire. Uh, I'm not sure what you can do for that, but I'm sure you'll come up with something clever. I can cause more fire, forest fires, so I'll just like sit here and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. fire, fire versus fire, they do claim that that actually works, but um, we'll see if the rolls hold to that. In any case, um, that's it for today. Thank you very much for playing, guys in this uh, for little scenario. Um, there's uh, uh, For Whom the Bell Knolls. How about that? Is that, is that a good one? You know, the Bell Knolls. <laughs> or you're doing it for the Knolls rather than the Lolls. I don't know. There's probably a better pun in there somewhere. <laughs> Do it for uh, the Knolls. <laughs> thanks to the folks who were watching. We had uh, someone stop by in the chat room. I didn't see them until they had popped out, but uh, is following the channel now. So uh, welcome cool. to Avian CA, or Avarian CA. That, that's John. Sure. John. Hey, John. John. I don't know all of our fans by name, but that would be probably something we could do. You can check us out at uh, facebook.com slash LOTDI. A summary of previous episodes goes up uh, generally within the middle week. Uh, and you can also find us on Facebook, uh, sorry, on uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the Legends of Omasha or the Legends of the Drowned Isles campaign to the Great Confusion playlists to get caught up on the story so far. We stream this game live on Sunday, starting around 3 o'clock in the afternoon Atlantic time, which all of us are probably feeling the shift in time this week, so we're all about an hour off from where we should be anyway. Yes. But we will try to do that on a regular basis pretty much every Sunday. And, uh, yeah, that's it for now. Uh, have a, a great week. Thanks again for playing, guys. Thanks for running. And we shall see you all next week.